G'day, welcome back to the channel. Some news today, time to do some drone news. Haven't done that for a while. Quite a few interesting things on the news wires. First of all, look at this. Look at this footage. Now, this drone footage, you might think, hang on a minute, that looks like the uh, the 1800s in America. There weren't any drones then. How did, how did they get this footage? And uh, did they have the right FAA permissions? Well, <laughs> the reality is, this is something called Sora. It's an AI system that can now produce what they call generative AI. It produces video. And this was a piece of footage that's just totally fictitious. This never happened. That, that little town didn't exist and there was no drone. It was all created by artificial intelligence. And that could mean that there's a lot of footage that people are getting paid to take by drone now that they won't get paid to take in future because you can just go to one of these AI engines and say, drone footage over a American town in the early west. And that's what you'll get. I mean, no pilots required, no set, no, just, it's like that. It's, I don't know what's going to happen. I think certainly a lot of uh, creative agencies may find themselves in big trouble soon because why would you, for example, you want to do a TV commercial. Why would you hire actors? Why would you hire videographers and and sound people and a crew and go out and do a couple of days of shooting and then bring it back and edit it and have it composited and graded. Why would you do that when you can use an AI and get the 30 seconds worth of video you need for your commercial in, in perhaps an hour just by crafting a careful text prompt and then using the material. Do you know why that's not happening now? I'll tell you why that's not happening now and this is interesting. It's not because the technology is no good, it's because you can't copyright something that is made by AI. So I expect, here's a prediction for you, I expect that within the next year to 18 months, the likes of the MPAA, the RIAA and all the other um, industries that are reliant on copyright, they will be petitioning the governments of the world to introduce copyright for AI produced material because until it can be copyrighted, no one can make any money out of it. For example, that piece of footage I just showed you, that was created by AI. I can use it on my channel because it's produced by AI, therefore it is not subject to copyright. So you can use it too. Anyone can use it. it copyright does not apply. Copyright only applies to works that are created by a human being, not a computer. Isn't that amazing? So yeah, it, it certainly means that there's going to be maybe a whole lot of redundancies in the creative industries. We won't need people with drones, people with video cameras, people with you know, um, sound skills because, hey, you know, we've got AI now. Ooh. Anyway, yeah, so AI, that's the future. Now, the next little item on my list here is we're constantly told that drones should not be flown near airports. And I agree with that. There's no place for, for drones at airports unless it's by arrangement and it's all, you know, like at the Tokoro airfield where we used to be able to fly model aircraft and never caused any problems in over 20 years, but now apparently I can't. <laughs> you know you know the backstory. Anyway, so you shouldn't be flying drones near airplanes, right? Aircraft, um, for obvious reasons. But the, this, the, the general narrative is that if a drone collides with an airliner, oh my God, the sky will fall, we'll all die, there'll be tidal waves and earthquakes and tsunamis. You know, it's, it, it's going to be a catastrophic thing. Well, look at this. Look at this footage here. This airliner collided with uh, some antennas. It failed to lift off before the end of the runway and smacked into some antennas. Look at the damage to the root of that wing. There's fuel dripping from this airliner's fuel tanks, but it still managed to leave the ground, do a circuit and land again. Nobody died. Nobody even got a cut finger as far as I can see. So if that's the kind of damage that these airliners are designed and capable of flying with, is the risk from a 250 gram drone being just a little overstated by the uh, airlines and the, the you know the, the people that hate drones, I think so. Remember also that even when a flock of 50 pound was I don't know big geese smacked into Scully's plane over the Hudson, he still got it down. Nobody died. Now, I think that the risk, as I've said so many times before in these videos, the risk is massively overstated and not backed up by any evidence. All we have is evidence to the contrary, and here's more evidence to the contrary. This airliner smacked into a whole lot of antennas on takeoff, ripped the snot out of the wing, fuel gushing everywhere and it landed safely and nobody died. So that 250 gram drone, really, is it gonna be that much of a risk to an airliner? Not that you should be flying a drone near an airliner, but um, you know, the fact that we have the situation where airports are closed because someone a mile away is picked up on aeroscope flying a DJI Mini in their garden, it's kind of crazy, it's kind of strange, but hopefully it's eventually, eventually common sense will prevail. 
Now, next thing, if you're, not, if you're not worried enough already, here's another thing to worry about. A European satellite is about to crash to Earth. Yep, it weighs 2.3 metric tons, which incidentally is just about the same as 2.3 tons. Just a little bit more, I think. Or less, I don't know, but it's very close. 2.3 tons of, of aluminum and or if you're in England, aluminium, it's European, so it's aluminium, titanium, God knows what else it's made of. All this massive great weight is going to fall to Earth sometime in the next couple of days. And they don't know where it's going to land. They've got no clue because they, in the, essence, in the name of safety, they emptied all the fuel tanks. So they can't control the re-entry. They emptied the fuel tanks because they didn't want it exploding on re-entry and filling up lower space orbits with shrapnel, which would endanger other craft. So they emptied the fuel tanks out and now it's just out of control, plummeting to Earth. And they, they say, shouldn't be worried. No, 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 no don't worry. There's, yeah, there's 2.3 tonnes of metal falling from the sky. But don't worry because, what is it? I, I read this article on Ars, Ars Technica. It's, it's really quite funny. It says, um, to be fair, the risk is non-zero, but it is quite low. Such large objects re-enter Earth's atmosphere every month, if not more frequently. And here's the line. No human has ever been killed by a piece of falling space debris. Does that ring a bell? Is that something that I've been saying? No, no human has ever been killed through the recreational use of multi-rotor drones either. And here they're saying, don't worry, it's not a big deal. Yet if you're flying a little drone somewhere, oh my God, we need to regulate, restrict and make rules because these little drones, they don't weigh 2.3 tonnes. They're not going to fall from space. If you're really unlucky, they might fall from a couple hundred feet, 250 grams of plastic, but that's way too dangerous to allow you to do anything. But if you've got a European space satellite that's, that's defunct, you can plunge that into the Earth's atmosphere. And they say that although some of it will burn up, the chunks that hit the Earth will still weigh about 50 kilos, I think. Yeah, 50 kilos. 51, 52 kilos, 115 pounds. So what they're telling us is that if a 250 gram drone hits you on the head, it's lights out curtains, that's it. It's an unacceptable risk. You can't fly over people. But a 2.3 tonne satellite that's just burnt up and left a chunk weighing 52 kilos or 112 pounds, eh, it's all right. That'll connect you on the head. You'll be fine. It's, it, it's, it's quite safe. <laughs> I don't know. When are people going to get through their thick heads that this risk thing is just completely out of control? The narrative is just beyond a joke. How can anyone take these regulators and, and all these safety people seriously when they keep making these massive allegations in regards to the danger of drones while we've got bits of the sky falling all over the place. I don't know. And while we're on the subject of regulations and rules, of course, it is less than one month until the FAA starts enforcing RID in America. Yes, remote ID. If you don't have it, you'll be in trouble. You think Philly Drone Life getting $182,000 worth of fines or something, wait till they catch you without your remote ID. You'll be... I don't know. <laughs> But as I predict that certain members of the model flying community, freestylers, bando operators, they're not going to fit remote ID. And many have already said so. And it's only, again, by showing the world that you can fly safely without these things. You don't need remote ID to be safe that we're going to make any points, make any headway. You know, we're going to demonstrate with every flight that's made with that remote ID is further proof that remote ID isn't necessary for safety. And I think we've seen time and time again that, that bad guys are not going to fit remote ID to their drones, are they? Really, seriously. You know? <laughs> it's like, oh, before I bob this bank, I'll just sign a confession. There we go. Oh, no, it doesn't happen. That bad guys don't work like that. So there you go. But that's the drone news for today. Now, I've, I've done drone news off and on from time to time, but I, I plan to ramp it up a bit, make it weekly perhaps, um, to keep you informed, because there are some interesting things that people otherwise just don't know about. So if, if you're interested in that, let me know down there in the comedy bit, and I'll do my best to keep the flow of information coming. In the meantime, I've just yesterday I posted a review on RC Model Reviews of the iFlight backpack, if you're interested in that. And if you're not interested, go and watch it anyway, because I need the money. Uh, and uh, there's, uh, there's other reviews all lined up, uh, which I'll be publishing uh, in a fairly regular schedule now on RC Model Reviews. So back in business over there, wonderful. And I have some flight videos on, it's one video that I've been working on for quite some time actually, you might be interested, is a history of the Tokara airfield. And I came here 20, over 20 years ago and I've got a lot of information, a lot of newspaper articles right from the early days. I would like to walk you through the history of that airfield and where it goes from here because they don't seem to know what they're doing. Situation normal. Anyway, I'll we'll cover that in a future video. Um, it'll be hopefully something you can, you know, grab a coffee or a beer and sit down and watch for 20 minutes when you've got nothing better to do. You might never find 
the time when you've got nothing better to do than watch a documentary made by me. But if you do, that's what you do. Right, that's it. Thank you. Oh, sun's coming out. I might go for a fly. Thanks for watching, guys. Oh, and thank you to my Patreon supporters. You make it possible for me to make videos like this and all the other stuff I make. That's great. Fantastic. No mid-rolls. No mid-rolls and no sponsors. Yay. Bye for now. Overregulation is like a tumor. It's killing a hobby. It must be terminated. Now.